And let's go, ladies and gentlemen. We are the most drugged up person in the universe, and it's time for us to kill a death claw. So let's whack on all of the AP we have. Execute a critical. <laughs> oh my goodness. Go for more. Go for more. We did it. <laughs> Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Fallout 4. We're back with Rihanna Keeves, the most powerful man in the game, with, of course, his very impressive gun. Although to call it a gun is a bit of an understatement. It's more of a small wooden plank strapped to the back of a massive nuclear yield device where it gently plinks nuclear bombs a very short distance and so it's not only the most deadly weapon in game for enemies but it's also the most deadly weapon in game to use because you're going to die a lot. Luckily Rihanna Keeves is pretty resistant when it comes to dying and today we're going to make him even more so resistant. We're going to be using our lovely nuclear pipe gun in order to make the strongest melee weapon in game. But how on earth do we make the strongest melee weapon in game? It's going to take us gaining a couple more levels and also probably getting access to some very very overpowered items. Now, just quickly before we do that, there are a couple of raiders over here who need to be dealt with. So, let's get some nukes over there. Oh, beans, I think a car's about to blow up. Oh, yep, there we go. Oh, and that's a plinky angry turret, which hasn't liked the fact that I've caused a fair bit of chaos. Right, that, that has cleaned them up a bit. Turret's still going, though. Aim higher. Oh, <laughs> Well, bugger. Anyway, we're going to go straight to the game, ladies and gentlemen. We've got some fun things to do. We're not going to worry about the raiders. We need to get our hands on a very, very, very powerful weapon. One of the most powerful weapons in the game, in fact. Now, we're going to be heading to this custom destination over here, which is also known as the West Everett Estate, which is a very, very valuable little location because it spawns the most powerful weapon in the game, the Ripper, which is basically the fastest firing melee weapon in the game. It's basically a chainsaw. Oh, who's this? Oh, it's a raider. Hello there, friend. Oh, Beans is an attack dog. Oh, bugger. Come on, kill it. Kill it faster. Kill the doggy faster. Kill the doggy. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so close to death. Oh, I know you don't like killing dogs, Riado Keeps, but it, it has to happen. Now, technically, this estate is going to be in a very dangerous area. There's going to be a lot of super mutants about, but don't worry. If we run fast enough, we can outrun the bullets. Okay, maybe we can't, but we can outheal the bullets, or at least some of them. We can't outheal the mini nukes. Oh, yes, we're getting close to the super mutants. Right, I think this is it. Yes, this area in front of us is the West Everett estate. Over here, inside of a little shack is the most powerful weapon in the game, or at least a default variant of it. A custom variant of it is even more overpowered, but we have quite a low chance of getting one of those. So into the estate we go. Ah oh, yes, right, so all we need to do is hop over this wall here. That's going to be a challenge, isn't it? Goodness, it's in that shed. Let me in the shed. Come on, let me over the wall. Let me over the wall. Let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. Piss off, hound. Right, okay. Oh, for goodness sake, they have a rocket launcher. That's not fair at all. Now, the reason why the Ripper is such a good weapon is not because it has a fantastic damage output, simply because it has the fastest rate of fire for a melee weapon, which is insane. Also, melee weapons in this game are just fundamentally broken. The game doesn't actually know how to calculate the damage for them, and so consequently, it's very balked. Now, it's time for me to start chugging a bunch of drugs so that I become strong enough to run straight through here. This will do good. Let's run our way inside. Jump up here, jump up here, jump over here. Oh yes, we can jump so high now. Right, and then what you want to do is run into this building here and grab ourselves the Ripper. There we go, and we're straight on out of here. Let's go, man. Jump up over the walls, dodge all of the explosive rocket fire. If they kill Dogme, it's okay. He's died a lot already today. And there we go. We're straight on out of here with our brand new Ripper. Let me check my inventory. Did I actually manage to grab it? Yes, I did. Look at that. Only 15 damage, but speed very fast. Oh, beans, that's a missile. Right, I think I've actually made my way out. But the reason why the Ripper's so good is just because it's got a splendid rate of fire. Look at that. Every time it clicks, it's almost every 0.1 of a second, it's doing a bit of damage. It's only 13 damage, though, so it's not incredible, but it is still good damage. Now, the Ripper is decent, but on its own, it's nothing too special. Now, what makes it special is if we were to start modifying it. But just before we do that, we're going to make our way to Diamond City just to see if they have an extra special version for me. Because there's a local trader there who sells Rippers, or at least has a chance to, and if he has a specially modified version, a legendary version, then it could be even more overpowered. Although, admittedly, this weapon is still quite useful, especially on rad roaches. I'm just look at this bad boy go. Oh yeah, they don't stand a chance. Oh no, we found some doggies. Okay, wild mongrels. Well, luckily, wild mongrels, uh, they just take a quick blasting from this bad boy and then they're gone. So there's a vicious mongrel. This is going to take a couple of extra blastings. There we go. Just keep on, keep on doing this. There we go. And he's gone. Oh, beans. Oh, and there's an alpha one. Okay, right. So what you do is you hit him with a good old one of these and you make it a critical. Oh, we can't make it a critical. Oh, beans. Oh no, I was not expecting that. I'm just going to have to power saw him anyway. As you can see, it's quite a powerful little saw, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect 
appreciate the tool. Where were you to help out, turret? Where were you? <laughs> it's an angry doggy here, and you were just looking at the floor, were you? Oh, you're so useless. All right, now that we've arrived in uh, Diamond City, let's go see if they have a special version of this gun for me. They probably don't. Apparently, the only way to wait in a game is to sit down on a chair. It's not like Skyrim where you can just stand still and let time pass. Nope, I have to physically sit down on this tiny stool in a public place for time to go by. Now, that's some ingenious game design, Todd Howard. Very good. Nope, after checking Arturo's inventory, he's got nothing useful for us, so we're just going to say goodbye to him. Instead, what we're going to do is fast travel our way over to the Red Rocket and start making the strongest weapon in the game. Now that we're here, in order to make the strongest melee weapon in the entirety of the game, all you're going to need are a bunch of crafting resources, but most importantly, two important weapons. This baseball bat and the Fantastic Ripper. Now, a baseball bat by itself is nothing too incredible. It's got a couple of mods. Like, for example, you can make it barbed, spiked, sharp, chain-wrapped, bladed, heated coil, or my personal favourite, you can add a rocket to it. And then you can even add a spiked rocket, a puncturing rocket, and a bladed rocket, a heated rocket, a searing punctured rocket, even a shocking puncturing rocket. It does stupid quantities of damage and it's just downright incredible. The only downside is, in order to actually build this, you need a stupid amount of resources and also to be a high level blacksmith and scientist. We are none of those things and so we cannot craft it. Unless... <laughs> uh, it's time for the shenanigans to begin. So naturally we're going to start glitching the game and when that happens drop down new save file. Now in our lovely weapon station we're going to be making our baseball bat better. Not by making it say a different colour because that's kind of useless, as fun as a mahogany baseball bat would be. Instead, we're going to be adding an upgrade. Now, what we're going to be able to do is have shop selected, and then what you want to do is hit E to build, but then just before you hit build, simply move your mouse over to spiked rocket. So, have shop selected with your mouse, and then just before, we're going to hit spiked rocket. Now, if you're on console, in order to pull off this exploit, you're either going to have to build it naturally, or you're going to have to hit the down arrow, but if you do that, you're only going to be able to get the next available one, which in our case is chain wrapped, which is still good, but I'd personally like something a bit more. So, get ready, ladies and gentlemen, get shop selected hit E and then hover over the spiked rocket there we go E way to tick and just keep on doing it eventually the timing will happen like so perfect now you can notice we can move our mouse around it's got spiked rocket bat selected in the background it says it's only going to take free steel and some adhesive duct tape well it best be some flex seal tape because good god this is going to be one hell of a weapon so let's craft this bad boy now we have a spiked rocket bat which is technically a ridiculously powered weapon in fact considering how low level we are in the game being able to do 123 damage per swing with a baseball bat is downright stupid. I mean, just look at this bad boy. He is insane. Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, now that we have our absolutely overpowered weapon, I've spoken to Riano Keeves, and you know what? He's got one very special offer to you. For the first 6,000 people to like this video, Riano Keeves himself will deliver a high-powered jet engine to you. That's right, your very own high-powered jet engine to strap to whatever melee weapon you like. Warning, high-powered jet engines are exceedingly dangerous. Use of tampering them without any proper experience or guidance will probably result in your immediate evaporation. The people at Spivko are not liable in any way, shape or form. But nonetheless, we know you want it. So with our incredible baseball bat, we can now do some very incredible damage. Let's find some people to test it out on. Oh no, it's innocent traders. Well, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, it's Trash Can Clara. Hello. You do not have any weapons that I'm looking for. And so consequently, Trash Can Clara, I'm going to drop down a quick save here and we'll see just how many swings it takes for Riano Keeves to decimate you with his weapon. Oh, our one and a two. It's as easy as that. Kill the Brahmin. Come back back here, you angry cow creature. And of course, use vats to just teleport next to it and do a hit. And oh god, it's still running away. Come back, you cow. There we go, it's dead now. So as you can see, it does a stupid amount of damage, but it's not perfect. The reason why it's not perfect is quite simply because its DPS is slow. We can swing once, then we have to swing again, and then we have to swing again. So that's about 400 damage we just swung out with the bat, but that took a very long time to do. So instead, what if we had the same attachment on, say, a much faster, higher rate of fire gun, like the Ripper, which can have say an extended blade which causes bleed damage oh now that i like how much do we actually need to cause it to bleed need some aluminium gears and screws right let's go get some all right so what we're going to do with our ripper is we're going to name it to one and what we're going to do with our fantastic new baseball bat oh, actually are we able to do this oh there's no way we can do that there's no way i'm wondering if we can attach the spiked rocket by hitting e to attach mod and then hitting bladed rocket i don't think it, the game's going to let us at all no it won't that's a shame that would be 
be insane if we could get a bladed rocket onto here. It would give us incredible damage and also it would force the target to bleed. So I guess that's what we're just going to work our way up to. Because bleeding weapons, when paired with the Ripper, are absolutely broken. Because it's such a high DPS gun and bleed effect stack, you basically stack the bleed onto the Ripper, causing it to do stupid amounts of damage and basically just drain the health pool of any monster you fight. What it allows you to do is basically sit there for half a second, hit an enemy twice, and then the next in-game tick is going to see the enemy lose all of the rest of their health immediately. Basically, whilst you don't have a one-hit kill gun, you do have a gun which effectively turns people to butter upon contact. Anyway, it's time for us to do our lovely cheeky mod swap. In order to pull off a mod swap where we take the modification from one weapon and strap it to another, make sure you drop down a quick save and name the item which you want to modify one and the item which you want to steal from zero. And now all we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is hit scrap and modify at the same time. Now it doesn't work that time and it's going to take a couple of tries but eventually we'll get it done. And that time I just accidentally scrapped the weapon entirely. And if that's the case, just restart. And there we go, perfect. What's happened here is we've managed to scrap our item and we've got this very strange bug menu which doesn't make any sense. Apparently we're going to scrap the item zero but as you can see we have the spiked rocket selected. So what you're going to do is hit enter and that's now going to put us in a very strange place where we're now looking at the ripper but if we press the right arrow key we can start attaching bat modifications to the ripper. And in this case case I've accidentally beans it and put the spiked rocket on already. I forgot I need to make sure it's just sharp. Now all we've done is we've added a sharp ripper instead. Can even make it a curved blade. Lovely. All right I've beans it up. I need to start yet again. Yeah so what you want to do is get the item that you do want onto the baseball bat in our case a spiked rocket and make sure you don't have it selected. Get the no upgrade selected and then back on out to this menu and once again do the scrap modify glitch. And once again this works perfectly. We can enter to scrap then press the right arrow key to get into this bugged menu and now we're attaching modifications to the ripper. As you can see we can attach barbed, spiked and sharp which are all lovely or we can attach the spiked rocket. If we could get as far as to the searing punctured rocket or the shocking puncturing rocket we can do stupid amounts of damage but honestly it's the bladed rocket I want access to. It's such a shame we can't get there just yet but soon with enough levels we can. Anyway it's time for us to get this spiked rocket attached. Oh dear I accidentally pressed E instead of doing it. Oh beans right hit E attach no no I beans it again. Right, there we go back in in the menu this time I haven't beansed it and now we're going to attach the spiked rocket lovely but of course in order to attach the spiked rocket we need to be able to make the curved blade don't we yes we need to be able to make the curved blade and then do another mod switch so that we get the spiked rockets what do we need for the curved blade gears and screws beans we forgot the gears and the screws all right we're gonna have to back out of this start over again and get some gears and bloody screws bam I've jumped into the midpoint of the video because I've realized I haven't actually even spoken about tea yet and that's devastating imagine me the spiffing Brit the ultimate most spiffing British person than ever not talking about tea in a video. So go fill up your cup of tea, ladies and gentlemen. You deserve it. You people out there with your fancy extra large Spiffco tea mugs, pat yourselves on the back. You can fill yourself up with extra tea. That's right. Make yourselves comfy, ladies and gentlemen, because we're about to take this video into uncharted crazy territories, and they're going to be fantastic. All right, some adventuring later, we're back with all of the necessary items, and I'm sure you're wondering why on earth is having a weapon that bleeds so much more important, and why am I going to try and go for it, even though I'm now going to make myself the strongest melee weapon in the game. Well, the reason why just having the strongest melee weapon in the game is not good enough is because weapons that cause bleed damage are completely and utterly broken. Now, late game bosses in the game don't have large amounts of health. They don't have huge health pools. What they have is resistance to certain types of damage. That's why the game has such a good rock, paper, scissors going on. It's why androids have brilliant resistances to some weapons, and yet if you start shocking them a bunch, they're going to go down very, very quickly. But there is no enemy in the game which has bleed resistance meaning that if all of your damage type is bleed damage then you basically melt through enemies like butter because nothing can resist your damage output. It means the hardest bosses in the game are actually really really easy to kill because they don't actually have that much health they've just got a bunch of armor to get through which guess what you don't even have to go through. Anyway let's craft up this bad boy so we've got our lovely baseball bat here which we need to make sure goes back to being not upgraded and then what we need to do is do the scrap modify and then scrap that item and then start the modification process where once again I I want to get a spiked rocket on. So we hit our spiked rocket here and now it's in this menu. Now what we need to do is get ready to hit the curved blade and then hit spiked rocket. And there we go. Make curved blade. That doesn't look like a curved blade to me, friends. This is a spiked rocket ripper. Let's make it. And there we go. I think we've done it. This is it. The spiked rocket ripper. It makes no sense whatsoever. The most powerful stabber. Oh my goodness. It's taken me so long to actually make it, but we actually have it. The most powerful stabber. It is a ripper 
Skipper with a spiked rocket attachment, a combination which should not be allowed in this game, and yet is. Oh. Yes, the most powerful stabber. Just look at this bad boy. Admittedly, graphically, it makes no sense whatsoever um, because it's just got a levitating rocket component. But trust me, this does damage. Dog meat. <laughs> Dog meat is sadly my test. And as you can see, uh, it does do damage. I'm sorry, but someone has to test it, Dog meat. It's not my fault. Don't leave me. Why does everyone Riano Keeves loves relieve him? You won't leave him, audience, will you? You can't leave Riano Keeves. He always finds you no matter what game you try to run to. Now, what can we go do with this bad boy? Well, I think it's time we go rip and tear some chaos into the wasteland. All right, you know what? It's time for us to go to the West Everett estate and say hi to the friends who we stole the Ripper from. Maybe they're feeling more friendly this time. Now, hopefully, we should be a fair bit more powerful, but still not perfect. Yes, it's going to take a little bit extra to make this just even more powerful. Hello there. Oh, you've got a turret. Well, let's saw through that and let's saw through you. Oh my goodness. You didn't last long at all. Right, let me take off those legs of yours. You don't need those. Those arms can go as well. There we go. Do you need the head? No, probably not. Beans, there's landmines everywhere. Oh, for goodness sake. I hate landmines. There's a mutant hound killing dog meat. Brilliant. Alright, where's that mutant hound for me to kill? Come here. Oh, Beans, that's a turret. That's not a mutant hound. Well, let's go kill that as well. Ah, right. Oh, my good god. Did why did it blow up the car? Ugh, turrets, I hate you. Now, as you can see, melee is good, but it has some drawbacks. So we need to find a way to make melee weapons much more viable in game. Now, interestingly enough, there is an item in this game which is completely and utterly broken. Now, if you were to make a guess as to what makes a melee weapon the most overpowered weapon in the game, what do you think it is? Do you think A, it could be some kind of crazy broken modification, B, some kind of crazy overpowered piece of armor, or C, a tasty happy snack for all the family to enjoy? The choice is yours. What you think it's going to be? If you thought it was C, just a random food item which was completely and utterly broken, then you guess correctly. <laughs> because Todd absolutely destroyed this game by adding in one simple piece of food. The Yao Guai Roast. I don't know how to pronounce it. Basically it's like a steak. Seasoned with a carrot and a tomato, it combines into a meal. Now this meal is unlike most meals in the game because it provides a lovely little bonus. You get 210 extra hit points, which is lovely, as well as plus 10 melee damage for 6 minutes. Now that sounds lovely, doesn't it? There's only one downside. It doesn't just last for 60 minutes. It turns out it lasts forever. Now it turns out this item is actually completely utterly broken. It doesn't add 10 melee damage at all. The Yaogui Roast, for some reason, adds so much more. It adds an extra 500% melee damage to whatever you're using for that one hour period. This is completely utterly broken, because 500% extra melee damage means every single melee weapon in the game can practice practically one hit just about everything else. It is stupidly overpowered considering it only requires one carrot, one tomato and some bear meat. Now all we need to do in order to pull this off is to find the bear meat in question. Carrots are easy, they're sold by just about everyone. Bear meat however, that's a bit of a challenge. Now luckily I know where we can find two of these lovely bears in order to hunt down. Remember the higher difficulty you are the more likely you are to run into these bad boys in the wild, so why not crank up your difficulty to legendary whilst you're wandering around the wastelands and you should spot more of them. Now we should find the two bears just over at this caravan park over to our east, and admittedly fighting them might be a challenge, but considering the items they drop are so exceedingly valuable for us, it should all be fine. Alright, there we go, I think I can see them over there. Yes, there's that bear. Fantastic, a stunted bear. You're everything we needed. Alright, it's time to actually get ourselves back up to max health. We've got some bear hunting to do. Right, hello there bears. I am your friend, Riano Keeves. I am here to harvest some lovely steak from you. Hello there. Right now, you're going to be quite the pain, but luckily I can hit you with this little chainsaw cutty thing here. And then once I've done that, oh my god, what the heck was that? Oh, uh, can I do the same to you? <laughs> All I need to do is just hit you a bit, I guess. Oh, you broke my leg. Oh, and there we go. They're both dead. Probably could have handled that a bit better. In fact, I could have used my nuclear bomb if I really wanted. But there we go, success. We've harvested the two bears and that's given us the two pieces of meat necessary in order to make this meal. So it's back to Diamond City we go. Because I'd like to use their food crafting station. And now that we have all of our lovely items, we can hop into this crafting station and make our fantastic roast. Here we go, a Yao Gui roast. Right, let's cook it. We can make two of these bad boys. Great. Ah, oh, fantastic. 
take. And now that we have that, we have technically the strongest combination of damage in the game. And I'm hoping this is going to allow us to absolutely decimate this game's balance. So let's go over to the Red Rocket and test our brand new creation out on quite possibly the strongest enemy in the game. Because apparently Death Claws aren't strong enough to test Pipe Gun Mini Nukes out on anymore. We've got to find even stronger enemies to test our stupidly overpowered weapons on. Now the strongest weapon I could find is the Mythic Death Claw. Now I can actually spawn a legendary version and I'm pretty sure this makes it the strongest legendary in the game. These bad boys can only be encountered from level 97 and onwards and as you can guess Rihanna Keeves at level 7 probably shouldn't be able to defeat these bad boys. They should absolutely smash him. And so we'll see how he does against them because he's going to need all the help he can get. So this is it ladies and gentlemen, a Mythic Death Claw. The strongest enemy I can find and it's going to kill us. Unless of course we consume this Yao Gui Roast, Popper Psycho and you know what whilst we're at it we can also chug a jet. Let's go kill this really really strong enemy. Legendary Mythic Death Claw presenting One Hit Saw. <laughs> The enemy is mutated. Well, bugger, let's just do it again. La 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 la. <laughs> Apparently, this is working. Oh, beans, it's gonna one hit us, isn't it? Yeah, this is the issue. When fighting a legendary mythic death claw, whilst we have the ability to do more damage than this game can comprehend, we are still ultimately limited by the fact that we are level 7 and only have 163 health. Anyway, let's try it again. Come here, little fun man. Oh, beans, he's a spicy man. Good God, he does one hit, doesn't he? We're going to need a lot of damage resist for this, aren't we? Having the strongest weapon in the game is great and all, but it's really not that useful considering we can't just straight up die to him. We're going to need to start chugging more drugs in order to do this. All right, let's chug some Exile. This is it. This is everything we needed. And eat that roast. And let's go, ladies and gentlemen. We are the most drugged up person in the universe, and it's time for us to kill a Death Claw. So let's whack on all of the AP we have. Execute a critical. <laughs> oh my goodness. Go for more. Go for more. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Considering he has the ability to one hit us, no matter what, the legendary Mythic Death Claw, I don't even know how much damage it does, but just the standard Mythic Death Claw can do over 350 in one hit, and its light hit does well over our health as well, so we'll just die instantly to that. But hey, we got a lucky 0.45 pipe pistol. Great. That was, that's useless. But that was absolutely a useless fight. We got nothing out of that other than a slight level up. Well done, Riano Keeves. Go kill that dog. Come back here, doggo. But yes, against most enemies will be very, very powerful. The amount of damage we can dish out is just stupid. I'm wondering if we can do it again. If we just keep making sure we're only using VAT so that it doesn't have a chance to fight back. There we go, it works. It works. If we only use VATs, we can kill the strongest enemy in the game. And we got a, a Martyr Raider's left leg. Awesome. Fantastic. That's exactly what I needed. So yes, with maximum AP and a piece of food item which allows us to do 500% extra damage, we can become stupidly overpowered. It is absolutely stupid the amount of damage you can do. As you can see, because we ate that thing, we now do 240 damage with our blade and it's very fast. Heck, even a regular security baton is apparently doing 240 damage. This is how broken the Yaogui Roast is. Literally being a chef in this game allows you to wield the strongest weapons money can buy. So we do the maximum damage any melee weapon can do and we also do it exceedingly quickly, making us quite possibly the most powerful being alive. You know what, let's try it out on something with even more health than a mythic called Death Claw. I'm, I'm talking of course about none other than the Nuka Lurk Queen, I'm pretty sure, with 1,500 health. Right, if this has worked, yep, that's a legendary Myluck Deep King, which we've just summoned in front of us with the ability to one hit us, although luckily it missed. And so with one hit of this, yep, we killed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a legendary Myluck Deep King we just killed. Oh my goodness, this is so stupid. All right, and this is it. A legendary Nuka Lurk Queen, ladies and gentlemen. The strongest health enemy I could find because she has 1,500 health. For that very same reason, she actually can take an entire beating from this weapon. Although admittedly it's going to take two vats to attack her, she's dead instantly. Oh my goodness, this is stupid. This is so stupid. Wow, this game, they really, um, really didn't think about food at all. I don't understand. This game has been out for years and they have not patched this. They've patched everything else in this game. Why is there a Brahman walking here? What are you doing here? They've patched everything else though. That's why I don't understand. Most of the exploits in this game, they're gone. But an exploit that allows you to do more melee damage 
damage than this game can even calculate is still allowed. Ah, I love it. Anyway, we're going to have to save any more adventures for the next video, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to see more of Rihanna Keeves in the world of Fallout, then please do just ask in the comment section and I'll make sure to get more done. But in terms of what video comes next, well, I'll leave it up to you, the lovely ladies and gentlemen at home. Would you like to see some more Rihanna Keeves action in Fallout 4, but this time he gains immortality thanks to some very fantastical combinations of armor pieces? Or would you like to see how Rihanna Keeves is able to gain infinite quantities of experience, making him the most high-level character physically possible? Or would you like to see Rihanna Keeves return to the world of Skyrim and create a character build which is so stupidly overpowered you're able to shout continuously allowing your character to become a living sonic boom device. All of that and more it's up to you to vote down in the comment section and find out. Anyway as always ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching this video. A massive thank you as always to my majestic patrons whose names you can see on screen now. Oh look at these lovely people especially that one there you know who you are you're majestic. These lovely sausages basically provide some nice stability to my income because at the moment YouTube has decided to effectively hire off my earnings, which is fine. The world's going for a bit of a rough bump at the moment, and naturally I'm very lucky to actually have a job still. And if you want to make my job even more stable, you can subscribe, because that means you're more likely to get recommended the next video by YouTube, or you could even have a bell button turned on. <gasps> my goodness, imagine pressing that. I mean, hey, you might as well subscribe. D fun fact, 50% of my viewers aren't even subscribed. Can you believe that? I can, yes, because I have the analytics. Anyway, if you want to see more videos, I've got a nice playlist up here on screen for you, which trust me, you're going to absolutely love if you enjoy today's video. There are many more adventures of Rihanna Keeves to watch, and considering all the spare time you probably have now, you might as well watch them all. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Stay safe out there, folks. Go refill your cup of tea. Trust me, you deserve it.